Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to field test the new FLIR Duo, which incorporates both an HD visible light camera as well as a lepton thermal sensor, all in a GoPro form factor, so it's compatible with any gimbal that'll accommodate a GoPro. It also works like a GoPro. Just press the button on the top to start and stop recording, and the button on the side turns Bluetooth on and off. The status lights on the front indicate whether it's powered on, recording, and the status of the Bluetooth. Using Bluetooth, you can connect with the FLIR SUAS app, which is available for both Android and iOS devices. And there are three basic adjustments available. First, you have three color palettes to choose from, starting with the familiar white hot. Here, I'm looking back at myself on a cold winter day. I'm the warmest thing in the frame, especially my bare head, so it's rendered in white. The objects around me are cooler, so they're rendered in progressively darker shades of gray, and the coldest thing in the frame is black. Here, you see the same scene rendered in a palette called Hot Metal, which resembles the Ironbow palette on other FLIR cameras. This is Rainbow, the third available palette. Using so many different colors makes it easy to see temperature variations, but can also make it harder to recognize familiar shapes, like people and buildings. You can also use the app to specify which video stream you see in the live video feed. You can choose to look at the thermal image full screen, which is what we've been doing so far. You can also make the visible light image full screen, but at that point, you're basically flying regular FPV. Your third option is picture-in-picture, picture, which superimposes the thermal image in the corner of the visible light image, allowing you to see both simultaneously. Regardless of which display option you choose, both feeds are recorded on board using a micro SD card. Finally, you can enable MSX. MSX combines data from the visible light camera and the thermal sensor to create a hybrid image like the one you see here. The Duo runs an edge detection algorithm on the visible light image and then superimposes those edges onto the thermal image. It's supposed to make it easier to identify shapes in the thermal image, but because of the parallax between the two cameras, the two images don't always line up perfectly. Also, engaging MSX seems to diminish the contrast in the thermal image a little bit. Now what I want to know is, how does the Duo work compared to other thermal imaging cameras? So I've rigged it up here on Raven alongside a FLIRVIEW PRO 640. Let's see how they look when they're compared to each other. Looking at the two side by side, the difference is immediately apparent. It's important to recognize that the Duo is not a replacement for the view. The lepton inside the Duo is a low-resolution sensor at just 160 by 120 pixels compared to 640 by 512 on the view. Consequently, the Duo is never going to be great at identifying individual point sources, like a missing person during a search and rescue mission. However, when used at low altitude, close to the subject, it can provide some valuable information. Here, we're doing a roof inspection. Everything looks good in visible light, but now let's change over to thermal. Right away, we can see where heat is being lost through the roof. So let's have a look at the new FLIR Duo. It's not a universal thermal imaging solution for drones, but provided you understand its limitations and select an appropriate mission profile, it can be a useful tool. Don't forget to click subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Fly safe.